Deuteronomy chapter 11. Therefore, thou shalt love the Lord thy God. You wouldn't think I had to tell people that, but you got to do it. And keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. Notice that this the comma and then throw always in there. Always. And know ye this day. For I speak not with your children which have not known, which you have not seen, the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm, and his miracles, and his acts. Look, look, look at all what the Lord has done. Which he did in the sight of Egypt unto Pharaoh the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. What he did unto the army of, e of Egypt, unto their horses, and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them, as they pursued after you, and how the Lord had destroyed them unto this day. Okay, we're going back over the history. Look what God's done for you. Look at the mighty power. They were afraid at Kadesh Barnea. There's giants in the city. The cities are walled up to heaven. Well, what has God done for you so far? And it's counting your many blessings and recording what God has done for you so you can say, Hey, I've been through this before. Or I've been through other things before. And what he did unto you in the wilderness, until you came unto this place where we are right now in Deuteronomy. And what he did unto Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Elab, the sons of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up. And their households and their tents and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all the all of Israel. Look, he's going, look what happened in Egypt. Look what happened in the Red Sea. Look what happened with, with Abiram and Dathan. Rebellion. You cannot rebel against the God because I just told you. Keep his charge. Keep his statutes. Keep his judgment. Keep his commandments. Don't do what Dathan and Abiram do. Don't do it. All those wilderness where we don't have water, we don't have food, and God would send the serpents, and God would, you know, there's troubles and problems by rebellion. Don't do that. And notice, since uh, verse 2, it's been one long sentence with each verse ending with a semi, uh, with a, with a colon. I think this is colon. Verse number 7. But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. Following a period. You saw all that. You saw all the rebellion. You saw that wilderness. You saw the, the victory in Egypt. Now go in that land and get the victory from God. Okay, with everything we read in the first seven verses. We're going to sum it up again by the first verse. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments... Which I command you this day, that ye may be strong, and go in and possess the land, whether you go to possess it. If you don't do what God told you to do, you're not going in. Remember your fathers, remember your grandfathers, your aunts and uncles? They didn't go in because they rebelled against God. Remember that? Now go in the power of the Lord and in, in all that God has told you to do. And that ye may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them and to their seed. So, obeying the law in the Old Testament, obeying the commandments of God gave you longer life. That's not so today. There are people who love the Lord and, and they're saved and they're wonders. They're just great. And they die in early age. I've known stories and heard stories of men who started the ministry and they got it built up and as soon as they got strong, as a pastor, they died. Early. And when you look at the law, and when, when they say, when Jesus said, it's hardly for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. That's where Peter, James, and John, and Andrew and all them say, hey, God, what are you talking about? Don't you know if, if you obeyed the law, you were right? You you had a prosperous life. Your age was well and all that. Why have things changed? Now today, wealth can hinder a man. The love of money is the root of all evil. But in the Old Testament, it showed sign that you were doing right. 
Not so today. All they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So, a land that floweth with milk and honey. It is calcium. It is nourishment. It is sweetness. It's a land that produces. For the land, going about the land again, whether thou goest in to possess it, is not as the land of Egypt. From whence you came out, where thou sowest thy seed and waters it with thy foot, using buckets and water. In Egypt, the Nile River was, was so far away, and any water resources, you would have to go get a bucket of water and carry it back to water the crops. And what Moses is saying here, and remember, Moses doesn't even know what the land looks like. He's never been there. And by what God has told him to say, listen, you know what? That place is well watered. As a garden of herbs. Yeah, that's a good, healthy garden. But the land, whether you go to possess it. Okay, that was Egypt. Now this is this land. It's a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. So there's rain and the soil soaks in that rain for nourishment of the land. A land which the Lord thy God careth for. And the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it. Even today in 2018, God looks upon that land. Makes them sick, but he's looking upon the land. From the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. All year round, God looks upon that land. No other land he's spoken about. And it shall come to pass. If conditional, he shall hearken diligently, very carefulness, attention to detail, checking once, checking twice, checking three times. Unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord, verse 1, your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. That's what God wants. That's the great commandment. Love, the God, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. The I, God, will give you the rain of your land in due season. It will be the proper time for rain. The first rain and the latter rain. And that first rain and latter rain is also a reference to the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. That in the tribulation period there will be no rain, thanks to Moses and Elijah. And that at the end when Jesus Christ comes, that rain, that, that first rain, that latter rain spoken of, is going to come at one time. And it's going to nourish the land where Jesus Christ will sit as king. And it will be flourishing as the curse is removed. That thou mayest gather in thy corn, wheat, barley, and thy wine, grapes, and thy oil, olives. The, the harvest of the land God has given. If, if the Jew hearkens to the law back then. I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle. He's going to feed the cows. He's going to feed the animals. That grass will be flourishing and green and present. You ever, see what, you ever see pictures of Israel today? That place is a dust bowl. And many places. Many places of Israel, it's a wilderness. And we'll read on, you'll see, because of their sins. Uh, take heed to yourselves. For thy cattle that thou mayest eat and be full. Eat what? Corn, grapes, olives, meat. The cattle. Drink the milk from the cattle. Goat's milk. Take heed to yourselves. Warning. That your heart be not deceived. And ye turn aside. And serve other gods. And worship them. And in Jeremiah's time they have. Then the Lord's wrath. Be kindled against you. You don't want that. And he shut up the heaven. God is in control of the rain. God is in control of the weather based upon your acceptance of him or your defilance of him. That there be no rain and that the land yield not her fruit. 
Again, Israel today, looks like, most of the places look like a, a wilderness. And least ye perish quickly from off the good land. It's still a good land, but you're the one that's sinning. You're the one that's rebelling against God, and your life will be taken, which the Lord God, which the Lord giveth you. Now, this is all conditional by the law, and this is not conditional in the church age. I have tried myself many times to plant a garden, and the only thing I can grow from my fingers is weeds. But I love the Lord, and I go out and preach, I read my Bible, I study my Bible, I help, I, I give my offerings to the Lord, and I can't grow a garden. But it says here, if you do your best and obey God and everything, you're going to have a fruitful garden. Must be something wrong. Yeah, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is not me. This is not for me, Deuteronomy 11. The only thing I can take out of Deuteronomy 11 is do what God tells me to do and do what God tells me to do. And then I get rewards and I get uh, crowns, but that's later on. I'll get some fruit, but when you look at the life of Paul, who did write, he didn't get really, I mean, he was fed, he was taken care of, but his riches are going to be when he gets walking away from the judgment seat of Christ. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart. I can do that. These, oh, oh, what's it sound? Not as soon as I want to say, these words have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. I can do that. And your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand. A sign, not a tattoo. Can I put something on my hand that would remind me of Bible verse? Maybe. If I really want to know a Bible verse and when I look at my hand, I got a piece of paper there, so I don't know how I would. That they may be a frontlets between your eyes. And I showed you when we read this before in chapter 6, verse 7, they had these vocabularies, vocabularies, whatever you want to call them. And someone would have these big fat ones on their head. That would be just for a show. Well, the only way I'm going to see if I look in a mirror, but this is what the Jews were to do. You shall teach them your children. I could do that. The Bible says if my wife has a question, she's supposed to go to her husband. He's supposed to answer her. The Bible says we're supposed to teach our children the Bible. Speaking on them when, when thou sittest in thy house. We're doing that right now as a family. So even though this is, this part is the Old Testament, I can do this. And when thou walkest by the way, when you're walking, talk about the Bible, talk about Scripture. When thou layest down, speak. And when thou risest up, Scripture. Put Scripture on your walls. Put it all over the place. And he says in verse 20, Thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thy house. Upon their thy gate. And the best one they have is Joshua 24. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now there's no bumper stickers here because there were no cars, but those are great too on your car. That was something, maybe they had something, you know, with their carts and maybe with their camels and stuff like that. They would have scripture. That's assumption, but I think you get the point here. Surround yourself with the scriptures. Now watch this. Write them upon the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates, upon thy hands, upon the foreheads, that your days may be multiplied. So again, let, let's, let's put that today. I got bumper stickers on my car, so I'm going to live a longer life. Absolutely not. I do it as a witness to others. I do it to remind me of scriptures. But I'm not going to, God's going to say, oh, look at that. For, let's see, six, seven bumper stickers times ten years. I'm going to give them next. No, I'm not going to give you 70 years. It's not church age. It's good because there's Christians don't put anything on their car. There are Christians that don't have anything in their house. And they can live just as long as you do. Your days may be multiplied. The days of your children. 
in the land. See, it's not a land for me. It's a city, New Jerusalem, which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Now, God did not swear anything unto my great, 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 great grandparents about a piece of land. It's got to be Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's not me. To give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. So you get heaven on earth. Get right out of the Bible. For if ye shall diligently, that's again, that's detail. Detail your life. Keep all these commandments which I command you, and do them. James says, Be ye doers of the word and not yours only, deceiving yourselves. And we already saw deceiving in verse 16. And that's a verse that can be used in the Old Testament, and that's a verse that can be used in the New Testament. Well, the Bible says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Well, what does it mean? It means do it. What's it mean? God says, Keep the commandments, keep the testimony, keep the statutes, and all. Do it. And for them to be prosperous. All these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God. To walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him. It's loving, doing, and cleaving. Then will the Lord drive out all the nations from all drive out all these nations before you. Now they don't get driven out. Why? Because they don't do what God told them to do in Joshua. You realize if they'd done everything they were supposed to do. David would never battle Goliath. David would never have any problems with the Philistines. They would have been all wiped out. Then will the Lord drive out these nations from before you, and, shall, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. You're just a bunch of people out in the desert right now. Wait till you see what the Lord has in store for you. When you were in Egypt, you yeah, you had buildings. You had that. He made houses for those uh, those women. The, the Oh, boy, what's it called? Oh. The midwives. But they were slaves. It wasn't theirs. They had to work hard. They had to work extra hard. And now when you get in that land, it's going to be yours. It's going to be your nation's. Every place... Whereon the sole of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Now that is no promise in the church age. I would love to claim that promise. There's a spot that we are every Saturday. I would love to go down there and say, My feet have walked this. It is mine in the name of Jesus Christ. I can preach. And you turn off that burden. I go down and, and quote that verse to them, quote that verse to the city of Daytona, they laugh at me. And I would be misusing the scriptures. And this world is not my home, so that is not my verse. It's not our verse in the church age. Where your feet should tread, they shall be yours. From the wilderness of Lebanon, draw this on a map, from the river, the river Euphrates. Wow. Even unto the uttermost sea. Huh? Shall be your coast be. Look how long. And David and into Solomon's reign is the only time Israel had had that full entire land. That was it. What Israel today is marked on the map is not truly what Israel is today. There's far more north. There shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you. All right. When the spies went into the caves by the end, they had afraid of the people. They were afraid of the giants. God's like, I will give them fear. And they're going to fear you. So when they go into Jericho and they go into Rahab's house, she's saying, we're terrified of you guys. We have locked up this entire city because of you. Me and my family are scared. We want to worship your God because your God is mighty. Please save us. And the dread of you, Jericho, upon all the land. There's that land again. Mark that land. And ye shall tread upon as he has said unto you. God speaking. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing 
and a curse. Uh -oh. See, people want the blessing. They don't want the curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God. Which I command you this day. That's a blessing. It'll be blessing is happiness, joy, and a curse, sadness, sorrow. If ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day, to go after other gods, and they will, which ye have not known, and gods they do not know. They're worshiping gods today they don't know. Abraham Lincoln on the penny, Roosevelt on the dime, Jefferson on the nickel, George Washington on a one dollar bill, Benjamin Franklin on the... Those Jews are worshiping them dead faces on our money. And any Jew that is in Washington, D.C., there, there's, you know, Washington Monument, there's Lincoln Monument, there's all the vanity and all the idols and all the mess that God said, hey, if you don't listen to me, you don't obey me, and you serve other gods, you're going to be looking at those other gods, and you're going to serve those gods. Now, when they get right, and they're going to serve the one true God with all their heart, with all their might, with all their soul, it's when Jesus Christ comes back, and he removes the curse, plants his throne in Jerusalem, and that land will be their land. And the nations will come to the Jews and say, hey, we want to worship Jesus. We want to worship your God. Show us. A curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day to go after other gods, which ye have not. Now, that's, I can do that. I am not to worship other gods. If I do, it's going to hurt me. It's going to curse me. It's not going to be to my good welfare. And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God has brought thee into the land, in unto the land, that's not me, whether thou go to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim and a curse upon Mount Ebal. And that's what Joshua will do. Are they not on the other side of Jordan where Moses has never been? So, Moses has told him, you're going in that land, and you're going to this spot, and you're going to meet at this spot, and the curses and the blessings are going to be mentioned at that spot. We'll get into that later in this book. By the way, where the sun goeth down, west, on the other side of the Jordan, where God wants them. In the land of Canaanites, that's where they're supposed to be. Which dwell in the campaign. Now that's the first and last place that word shows up in the Bible. Campaign right there. Now, I'm marking my Bible. I just started doing it. The first time words start showing up in the Bible. And I'm telling you right now. I'm up to CH. I'll pick it up CL tomorrow. Lord willing. And it's amazing. That the first time where these words show up. It is a wonderful study I'm doing. And as I go along, I'll tell you things that I've learned. A campaign over against Gilgal, besides the plain of Morah. For ye shall pass over Jordan. Look at that. You're going. To go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you. And ye shall possess it and dwell therein. And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and the judgment of Moses. Which I set before you this day. See how much he's putting on those judgments. Those statutes and all those. That's what's going to get you long life. That's what's going to get you to keep the land. That's going to keep you happy with the Lord. And they don't. And the Lord's not happy. They die early lives. And they don't get to keep the land. And they're not in the land today really much. 